In the wake of the First World War, a more restrictive approach to the Jus Albellum emerged. The League of Nations, with its assembly, was created in 1919, and the Covenant of the League of Nations, its constitution, placed restrictions on the freedom of states to resort to war. The Covenant obliged states to at least attempt to settle their disputes peacefully before resorting to the use of force. States were obliged to refer disputes to institutions such as the Permanent Court of International Justice or the Council of the League of Nations. It is only when they did not succeed in slitting their disputes by peaceful means and following the lapse of a cooling down period of two months that they recovered their liberty to go to war. Therefore, if you read the Covenant, there was no prohibition on use of force, but instead an attempt to limit outbreaks of war. However, looking at the practice and statements of the member states of the League, it may be argued that the provisions of the Covenant were, over time, interpreted by the member states as a general prohibition on use of force. It is also worth mentioning the Kellogg Bryan Pact, which was signed by France and the US in 1929. That pact entailed the renouncement of the right to resort to war between its two signatories. Although the pact was bilateral in the origin and prohibited war rather than any interstate use of force, almost all states signaled their intent to adhere to it, and the notion of war was understood in a general way as meaning any use of force. While the true meaning of this text was ambiguous, the interwar saw a genuine movement towards the prohibition of war. At the very least, this movement saw the return of the idea that one's belligerent's cause may be more just than the others. As this project prospect emerged, so did the idea of an asymmetrical application of the law of armed conflict. Again, use ad bellum could act as an obstacle against the development of use in bellum. The complete failure of the interwar system to prevent the outbreak of war led to a stronger commitment to international institutions and a more robust legal regime in order to prevent future conflicts. Under the Charter of the United Nations, which was founded in the wake of the Second World War, the use of force was declared illegal under international law. Only two exceptions existed, self-defense against an armed attack and authorization by the UN Security Council. It is therefore possible to distinguish between the legal belligerent, who used force only in self-defense or under a Sec Security Council authorization, and the illegal belligerent, the aggressor state. The idea of asymmetrical application of use in bello in favor of the legal belligerent remained for a long time and was particularly present at the time of the work of the United Nations General Assembly on the definition of aggression. It is only in the 70s that such idea would be completely abandoned and that use ad bellum and use in bello would be clearly separated from each other.